Support for 100 Watts and a Wire is brought to you by 100wattsandawire.com. To subscribe to the show, simply click the RSS feed or subscribe wherever you get your podcast. When you visit, apply for your free 100 Watts ID and learn how you can become a sustaining member. Click the Donate page and pick the option that works best for you. We've got a traveling toolkit, 100 Watts and a Wire gear, and activity days with prizes. That's 100wattsandawire.com. And ICOM. Get out and get active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. And BioNO Power, offering the best performance lithium iron phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W E R.com or contact dealers nationwide. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, hello again, friends. It's Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel. A walk and talk before the tune-up. Yeah, it's tune-up week recording this. On a Sunday, it's a beautiful day in this part of Missouri. We're just north of St. Louis. And uh, I've got a thermos full of coffee, and I've made my way out to the antenna site. I call it the antenna garden. I would never call it an antenna farm. I think you'd at least need one tower, and I don't have that. But I have the uh, what they call the nature's towers, which are big, beautiful oak trees. I love them very much. And uh, you'll hear some birds. Uh, We may even hear a little bit of a uh, ruckus with animals. Yeah, we're north of the city. When I say St. Louis, you think of, you know, the very urban environment. But if you travel 35 minutes or 40 minutes out, uh, you can find a little bit of country. And I'm a little bit rock and roll. Grew up in the city, so uh, the first opportunity we had to get some open space, uh, we certainly did that, and it helps to. Oops, see, here things drop. I see you, squirrel, dropping something down. Sums up a bitch. So anyway, look, it is a a week of preparation. I've been working on this during the whole COVID nineteen. How are you doing, by the way? Look, my my sweatpants still fit, so. I feel good, but uh, in reality, I feel like I am not moving as much as I should be and uh, still eating. So it'll be good to get out and start moving again. Here in uh, this part of Missouri, we are uh, headed back to work at least on a uh, part-time basis in the building. We'll work some from home. And uh, hopefully things will flatten out a little bit, Um, you know, get the economy moving again. A lot of people still without uh, jobs. It's rough, man. 2020 is, uh, it's rough. Do you hear that woodpecker? I guess things are okay with you. Hey, look, so I got to tell you about this instance with my uh, antenna. And I'm going to call it an ant Anna, or an Aunt Anna. We decided we were going to move the uh, Sunday evening 100 watts in a wire net, the HF net, to uh, 20 meters. And I'm like, cool, man, I'm cool with that. You know, I've got a hex beam. I could turn the beam. It's not up so high, but, you know, I could turn it toward you. And, and uh, oftentimes it does quite well at about 25, 30 feet tops. Some people will even tell you um, less. I'll do a lot, you know, a lot more or less. Shoot, I had that hex beam on the ground waiting to put it up and, uh, and worked Norway on the ground. So, you men, you just never know. That's the beauty of amateur radio. But anyway, we moved the net. And so we're, uh, you know, we're going along doing it. And I'm like, damn, I'm not, what is going on here? And I looked at the, uh, the uh, the meter and my SWR was 2.3 and and for me 
damn, this is pretty high up. Man, things grow up quick around here. We're heading out deeper into the woods, look at 160 and 80. And uh, everything's high up here. If I catch me some poison ivy, I'm going to be mad. So I'm not looking down at it. <clears throat> Anywho, we won't go too far. But So we get to... Uh, I key up and I'm seeing 2.3 and I'm like, oh, hold up, man. On this little antenna, for me, you know, a 20 meter antenna is hard, you know, a dipole or whatever you would, would want to make. 20 meters is usually somewhere 2.1 or below. And I was like, this is weird. I go back down the uh, the high part of the band, same thing. I'm like, oh, okay, well, it is a double bazooka. And... uh but usually it's not this high. If I'm like one to six all the way across on a bazooka, maybe. You know, it depends on the height. Mine's about 50 feet. So I end up working a little bit uh, with Steve, W7UDI, and I'm, I switch my antennas. And so I, I take the one that has high SWR. I know 2.3 is not high, but something's wrong. So I'm like, I'm not going to mess around with it. Took it out of play for that evening. Went back out the next day, brought it down. And to my surprise, this antenna had hundreds, uh, straight up, hundreds of ants. They were along the support ropes. They were inside the centerpiece. And then I think I didn't, it's not like I've discovered a design flaw in this particular antenna but it is a coaxial dipole and it wasn't sealed up and ants were pouring out of it like what happened we just had a castle in the sky we're 50 feet up we're going tree to tree we're living up in here like the jeffersons and i'm like whoa man and they're crawling on my hands i put a picture up on the facebook group if you do social media at all even if you lurk around you could go to the 100 watson wire facebook page check out this picture i posted and it still doesn't do it justice i mean they were all over they you could, i think i heard them singing a song you know and they were going down the uh down the support ropes everywhere i put my hand they were going over it a true Aunt Anna. And so uh, the great amateur radio community is so helpful. You know, people will say, you know, put a little of this on it. Put a little um, grease or a little bit of some sort of something to seal it up. And I was like, okay. And I put it back up there. And, it, it, you know, it, it was just, they basically killed it. I think there were probably dead ants shorting out this antenna to the point where it's not like I could shake them out. I find the double bazooka to be pretty, pretty uh, sensitive, especially at the, at the connection points. I mean, it's great. It's coax. I love it. It's broadband. It's quiet. And I went through a phase a few years ago where I wanted everything I had to be a coaxial dipole. Everything I had had to be. And they're not cheap and they're not very easy to make, at least for me. You could probably do it. Uh, but between time and the, the lack of know-how on this thing, I did not. So I bought them. You know, and even a 20-meter coaxial dipole or double bazooka, as it was known through marketing purposes, I guess, sounds sexy. Uh, you know, it costs you some dough, man. And uh, I put it back up there and nothing changed. In fact, it, it, it seemed higher. Probably me looking at it, turning it, looking in the holes, taking pictures, trying to get these ants out of there, handling it. It just spiked up even higher. So I, I took it completely out of commission. I had a one-to-one -one ballon laying around. And now uh, this is my base station. This isn't even something I've been playing with for tune-up. This is just you know, for a base station. And I'm guilty of not checking. When do you check? Do you check all of your antennas all the time? I I listen to 20, but you're not going to see SWR take a spike unless you operate on it often, you know, and I, I just didn't, I didn't look. Sometimes after a storm, I'll run through, I'll put a meter on and I'll look at my, um, my antennas to see if they're at least up and I'll, I can tell if something's wrong 
So uh, we moved to 20 meters, and next thing you know, I see it happen, and it did. But I, I went and built a uh, just a simple, I probably cut it even a little too short. But I knew that about 16 and a half feet on each end would get me somewhere close. And uh, at 50 feet, uh, 16 and a half feet with a one-to-one -one ball, and I had some wire cut it and put it up there and uh, so we're back in business it's not a double bazooka and it's probably not the most ideal of dipoles i probably should have cut them a little longer but just a few inches you know 16 feet maybe eight nine inches on each side would have got me where i needed to be or or would have preferred to be i should say and uh you know, many people are like, oh, just hit it with a tuner, you're fine. And that's all true. That's all true. I, I tend not to. I'm at home. My rigs will handle an SWR up to, you know, crikey, what is it? It's, I want to say three, but I think it could actually be ten. This just, just shows you at home I like to, I like to have my dipoles in that two to one and under and if I can get them within that range, I usually don't mess with them, and that's what happened on 20. We'll take a break. We'll talk about the tune-up next. The Kilo Station again, again, again. Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel. You're 5'9". Right. The ICOM 705 is your perfect QRP companion as you have base station features and functionality at the tip of your fingers but it's in a portable package covering HF, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at 1 kilo, or just over 2 pounds. With RF direct sampling for most of the HF band, and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. It's got that large 4.3 inch color touch screen with live band scope and waterfall. And the perfect accessory for the IC705 is the optional backpack. It's the LC192. It has a special compartment for the IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations or just a day in the park. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on all ICOM radios. You have the perfect face for radio. Okay, welcome back. I want to take a few minutes to talk about the antennas I'm going to be working with during the tune-up. I also want to take a, a minute or two just to thank those of you who've made your way over to the new podcast. It's called Hour 73, and it's a broader look. Uh, we're going to mix in some communications as well, but it's everyday people trying to become more self-reliant uh, during the 21st century, sharing tips and ideas. I mean, everything from home remedies. But we also look at history. So we're talking about what's happening through today. And then looking back at history to see if we've seen this before and trying to use that history as a guide uh, to prepare uh, for these times. And there isn't as much doom and gloom uh, it's more about, uh, again, I'm interested in building communities. I think you'll find that consistent with the way we do things at 100 watts and a wire. Everybody is welcome. Always has been that way and always will be as far as uh, my productions and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, some weird pollen, you know, everything's exploding now. As far as my shows and productions, it's inclusive to everybody and uh, that's the way it's got to be and uh, we live in some interesting time between the pandemic and George Floyd's murder uh, it's very um, you know you know what's going on you've been paying attention like I said though I, I tend to uh, to read more I, I'm enjoying the, the live streams that are coming out from the protests um, and staying away from the news organizations, politicizing every friggin' thing, uh, is not helpful. 
there's issues with the media, there's trust issues with the government and the, the media and how we get our information and in general. And uh, so not to go on a rant there, but um, I just want to thank the folks who have come over from 100 Watts and a Wire to the Hour 73. And why Hour 73? We're, we're kind of taught, especially as hams, to prepare for the first 72. And that's kind of like power outages. You know, if you lose power, you need enough water, you need enough food and uh, energy to get you to, through. Well, what happens at hour 73? Well, if you didn't plan, you're hoping that FEMA has set up camps for you and that they'll come and save you. The show hour 73 wants you to think of preparedness as a lifestyle. <clears throat> Pardon me, man, I've got some... I can take a little drinky drink. If you look at things as a lifestyle and you look beyond the first 72... You know, you're looking at long-term sustainability as a lifestyle. And you can find it wherever you're getting podcasts, just like this one. And everybody's welcome. And everybody's got a story. So, uh, come join us there. Let me get a drink of coffee because I feel I'm getting hemmed up. I'm not getting choked up. Hemmed up. Thank you for filling the silence, little bird. <coughs> Thank you. Join us, though. Everybody's got a, a way. Uh, you know, preppers have taken a, uh, I don't know. People look at preppers in uh, different ways, and there's different extremes, just like everything else, you know. <clears throat> but uh, the way I'm looking at it is the early pioneers, the Native Americans, the First Peoples, um, they did the best they could with what they had. And as amateur radio people, you can get that. You understand that. Your grandparents, they came up a different way. They canned their food. Uh, they grew their own food. They made things with their hands. And they survived the best they could. And so with uh, this new podcast, uh, that's what we're aiming to share information. And uh, you're welcome to join us there. Now... As we get to talking about tune-up and antennas and ants in the antenna on the base station, what am I doing on my portable lops? Well, that's a great question, let me tell you. About a month and a half ago, I figured out the link dipole. And I always thought, for some reason, a link dipole was some punk antenna. I never, I didn't really have an opinion, frankly. But I never even looked again. I'm like, dipole. Nah, dipole. I made a great wire portable antenna. I've, I've since destroyed it. I've talked about it on this show oh, for years. And it was modeled after a uh, Pathfinder, Radio Waves Pathfinder. And it was really the beta. Emmett was, at least that's what he said, he was putting together a new antenna called the Pathfinder. And it was three pieces of wire, basically, with a, uh, with a ballon. I don't know how many to one. It wasn't one to one. It was like 61 to one, something crazy. And it was great on 20 and 40. And I used that. And then uh, <clears throat> I got myself a mast from Max Gain Systems that I love. Another ham friend uh, was out chasing the storms and was popping that up. And I wanted to know what he was using and... I checked it out, and that's kind of what I'm running with at the moment. I also use MFJ mast, uh, the ones with the uh, quick release, uh, so they're the fiberglass models, and they come of different, different kinds, too, you know? Yeah, they've got different stuff. So MFJ has great stuff that I use with mast and max gain systems. So I've got one up at 25 feet. I've got an MFJ and a max gain system. For 25 feet, right? So I've built these antennas and tuned them for 25 feet in my truck portable. So I go anywhere I want to go that I can get to and set up this antenna. And I started playing around with the linked dipole. If you haven't heard about it yet, check it out. A lot of the guys are using it up at uh, Summits on the Air. Maybe some of the uh, Parks on the Air guys and girls are using it. <clears throat> But I just was thinking that there's something in my mind. 
And it's with the way you you were kind of introduced to ham radio. And if you listen long enough, you know that like my Elmers were telling me, you know, tuners, oh, tuners, ah, oh, tuner, oh no, and like off center fed dipoles. You know, they put it in my head that that was bad. And I'm like, but wait, I just got this g- big one. Like, I got a thing. Is is it bad? And and it got me to the point where I was like, I don't know if this is a hobby that I can do. Because I can't do what you're doing and saying. I needed an off-center fed dipole back in the day. Anywho, I, I, I was like, dipole, dipole, dipole. And then I would looked up the link dipole which essentially is cut for the bands that you want. And I use power poles in between. And so what you're doing is extending, say you cut wire for 20 meters and you tune it to where you want it. Okay, well how much more wire would you add to get to 40 meters? Or 30 you know, meters, whatever, whatever you're doing. So I cut it for 20. I put a power pole in between, connected them, and then made a 40. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, how much more would I need to make an 80 meter dipole? Cut the wire for that based on the overall length. Tuned it each time I went from 20 to 40 to 80. And it's no big deal to bring it down to disconnect, you know, the wire for the antenna that you want to use. I would try it, guys, and I'm going to try it. I'm just gonna do it. That's what I have. So I have a 20 and a 40 I built, and then I got a little nutty. And then I'm like, let me build another one. Of course, you just don't build one. And a 20, 40, and an 80. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. Redundancy is really good. How about I build another one? So I've got a little crazy with it. But we will be uh, putting those together for the tune up, and we'll take a little break here. Oh, Lord. I'm out here hiking, but I enjoy it. I need to get around so I can get rid of this COVID weight. I feel a little heavier. Got to move these bones. Take a break. We'll come back and talk more about who you should be chasing and listening for for the tune-up when we come back next. This is 100 Watts and a Wire. If you're an electronics kit builder, you'll find something interesting in the assortment of gadgets available at hamgadgets.com. Ham Gadgets has been around for nearly 20 years, bringing you some of the most popular kits ever. You've seen these projects all over the place. They've even been featured in the American Radio Relay League's Handbook for Radio Communications. Their Morse code keyers are being used every day by thousands of hams around the world. The $35 Pico Keyer has everything you need to build a Morse code keyer, including the enclosure. They also have a full line of universal king adapter kits for transmitters and amplifiers. Order online at their secure website today and get one week delivery for U.S. orders. They are on the World Wide Web at hamgadgets.com. That's ham, H-A-M, gadgets.com. QRO to the people. This is 100 watts and a wire. Welcome back. It's been so pretty. It's been so pretty we had days of rain i mean just rain rain and you hear the guys in texas the guys on the radio they'll talk about it's when i first heard like a cow pissing on a rock you know like that's how it was coming up at you i mean we had rain oh i hear you i hear you now don't mess up my trees the one with the antennas hanging in them oh hear that but uh, for the last couple of days, it's been gorgeous, man. I got the grass cut early and could uh, enjoy a weekend of tinkering around and getting ready for the tune-up. And this is our fourth tune-up. We do two activities a year. And pardon the heavy breathing, I'm just walking, kind of a hike. And uh, we do the fallout in October. Kind of, you know, one last hurrah, a chance for you to get outside. If you can get outside, move around a little bit. And of all times right now, this tune-up is coming at the right time. A chance to get out. If you can go to a park, I know a lot of people have been stuck inside. I also know quite a few hams that live in HOAs, live in condos or apartment buildings where they can't. Put up antennas or they do an, an attic 
you know, so they like to operate in the parks and they've been shut down due to the COVID-19. And this year there was some speculation about what would the league do for field day? You can't have, you know, and I say it with respect. We got a lot of older hams that like to get out on field day and um, share that camaraderie and get out there and socialize and have a meal with their friends that they've been doing this for for years. Not the safest thing in the world right now, and uh, it's the responsible thing to do. And many, many have canceled my club here in St. Louis that I belong to, uh, the St. Louis Suburban, St. Louis Suburban. Ugh, the memory. St. Louis and Suburban Radio Club. They've been around since 1948. Hopefully I got that right. And I enjoy being a part of them and following what they're doing. Well, they're canceled because of this very reason. You know, you can't have multi-ops sitting around arm length. You know, it's, it's, it gets tricky, man. It's a tricky situation. So the league has augmented... It's scoring, and I started talking to, and it's great. I think the league um, is correct with saying, look, you know, this is an actual real emergency scenario, and uh, we're in a real emergency, a pandemic. So let's treat this like, uh, and let the show go on. With the caveat of, you know, how the scoring will be and who you can work, and you should check all that out for yourself. If you're a diehard field day person read the rules because you can still get in the game and play and it's it's great i'm glad field day continues at the national level you know aries different aries teams are doing different things they usually do different things from say the clubs um my aries team is still trying to figure that out you know what they're going to do For me, I've always tried to get out no matter what. And the tune-up was created as a way to get out and operate your own personal gear. Because uh, when I went to field day for the first time, you know, people were signed up to work the 20 meter station. Uh, This person was set up to, uh, to operate, to put the antennas up. You know, this is a team that's gonna do this. This team's gonna teach. We'll set up some sort of uh, training. You know, you're assigned a a gig on field day. And and so I wanted to do something that was a little different. And maybe before field day. So then came the tune-up. I love to work on antennas and build them and hang them up and test them. I've been doing a lot of work at 25 feet, MVIS type of study for emergency communications. Just And also... Just portable in the park, getting it up. I took on the uh, the goal to uh, create an event or an activity outside of field day that kind of would get you ready for it and let you test your own gear just in case uh, you couldn't do what you, you had in mind with the team on field day. Love field day and uh, happy to participate. This year, though, tune up. We were like, well, what are we going to do? We always do it kind of as individuals anyway. And we were looking at field day thinking, you know, this could be a um, could be a wash this year for many people. Why don't we make, and it was Steve's idea, W7UDI, to say, let's do like a team thing. Let's put teams together. You don't have to be together to be together. I was like, wait a minute. I'm thinking, oh, don't want to be together to be together. You don't have to be together to be together. Yeah, you don't have to be together to be together. So, and I put a team together, and of course, typical fashion, like so many people you want to like, you know, that if you could get people together, you would put a huge team together. You know what I mean? If you could just have anybody around. And so I got to thinking, all right, got to have, all right, Steve, you're going to be on the team. You're going to be on the team for sure. And then who else? You're like, okay, our other net control operators. Like Ian, W1JIW. I hope he can participate, man. Spring and summer comes around, that brother gets busy. So we're like, yeah, he'd be fun to hang out with. And uh, the other Ian, then it became a joke, NV4C. Another uh, operator from our Sunday evening net. And I'm like, look, 
my boy Ian up near Chicago. That's my guy. That's my dude, man. We're good friends. And uh, I'm like, all right, so now we have three Ians? Okay. Before this in amateur radio, I did not know an Ian. Did not know an Ian. Now I know three. All three will be participating uh, for the tune-up. So you've got me, you've got Steve, the three Ians, and I'm like, look, got to have the ladies. Ladies are the centerpiece of my life. So, uh, and to RJ, Rhea. Rhea will be there too, representing. Hudson Division, ARRL a director. Hope I got that right. And all around badass, big brain, great op. Uh, she's going to run as well. And then I've got friends over at Amateur Radio Newsline. I'm like, y'all should put together a team. Come on, have fun. And then uh, I was like, but Karen, KD2GUT, I'm like, can you run that weekend? Are you, you interested? Joining up, get on the air. She runs a 100-watt station through a vertical, I believe, unless she's changed things. I know she was flirting with an amplifier. So, uh, yeah, she'll be on the team too. So, and then... Uh, I was invited, I was going to, uh, to spend some time with uh, Michael, KB9VBR. He's got a YouTube channel that I like to check, and, and I, I like his channel because his audience, it may not be the biggest audience on YouTube. I say that with respect. Dude's up to like, I don't know, 30,000 or whatever it is, subscribers. It's great. It's great, man. But when he drops a video, they are engaged. They go to it. It's not this sort of, I'm just stopping to pause here for a possible snake crossing. Something pretty thick through here, so we're looking good. Uh, but Michael, uh, Michael's up in Wisconsin, and uh, every now and again when I get a little extra time, I'll, I'll pop on the YouTube videos. He likes to go portable and camp and all that sort of thing, so he's going to be on the team as well. So you've got eight chances to work. Chase our team. If you can't find someone, you know someone. Just say, hey, let's team up. And then go to 100wattsandawire.com. Click on activities. Really no rules. You can operate anytime on June 12th through the 14th. That actually gets you started on Thursday evening. Uh, for me, it's 7 o'clock Central. Uh, that starts Friday morning. And uh, you can go in through the weekend. Then we end up when we... Uh, about 7 o'clock Central Time on Sunday, right before the net. You know, it's an honor system. Just submit your name, your uh, your teammates, your, your contact totals. You don't have to submit your logs. Just get on the air. Have some fun. But we've got eight people for you to work. Again, it's me, K0STH, Michael, KB9VBR, Ian in Maine, W1JIW, Ian in Georgia, NV4C, you got Steve, W7UDI in the Pacific Northwest. We are doing cross-country Kilo India 9 Whiskey up near Chicago, N2RJ in Jersey, and KD2GUT out of New York. So a great cross-section of ops. I hope you'll listen for us and work us. All right, friends, we're going to wrap things up for this week. Just a quick little note from a hike. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And by all means, if you can, please try and stay above the noise. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.